Hello? Hello. 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 This is Joe from Softron. How's everyone today on a Friday? Very good. Very mute mode. Okay, uh, before we get started, I'm going to ask uh, the, the people on the webinar if they could um, either take themselves off a speaker so we don't have background noise, or um, if we do have excessive background noise, I'm going to have to mute everybody just so we can uh, get through it and, and hear it. Say. So if we could be conscious of the background noise, that'd be great. So. Um, Okay. Can everyone hear me? Can everyone see my screen? Oh, I'm breathing. Good. No, I feel better. I don't <laughs> okay. Okay, guys, let's get started. Uh, my name is Joe Hoffman, and I'm the technical support manager with Softfront CRM. Thanks everyone for joining. Um, today we have a we have a lot of things to cover. Um, and I'm gonna have to mute everyone because of the background noise. So um, I'll unmute when I'm done speaking. Thank you. Okay. Today what we're going to talk about uh, is campaigns. Broadcast, I'm specifically going to focus on um, broadcast and touch campaigns. And um, the first thing that we need to do with campaigns is we need to um, start with a template. Now, to give you a little uh, background on, uh, on the campaigns, uh, campaigns, uh, when you send campaigns, they are sent using the email that you have set up in the contact record of your of the, the contract contact portion of your leads and customers. So it's very important to realize that if you do not have an email address in your contact record of leads and customers, that person is not going to get that um, that broadcast and or touch campaign. So hang on just a second. Okay. Now, as I was saying, the, the contact record um, portion of your leads and customers is what contains your email. Let me show you what this looks like. When I open up a lead customer, for example, right here, I'm going to click on this one. And then what I'm going to do is open up the contact record of this customer. There's still a lot of background noise. Okay, I'm going to mute everyone. I'm sorry. That's the only way we can handle this. Yeah. Okay. Well, once again, I'm sorry I can't hear anyone there because they're all muted. Um, if you if you need to to chat me a question, go ahead and, and chat it down here. Otherwise, when I'm done presenting, I'll open it up for, for questionings. But with the background noise, it makes it impossible to keep everyone live. I apologize for that. Okay, so this is the contact portion of your leads record. So as we can see, we have an email address right there. If you do not have an email address right there and you think you're sending a broadcast and or touch campaign, it will not be sent. That's the first thing I need to point out to people because 
they'll send campaigns. It's like, well, why didn't why didn't these people get the campaign? And that's usually ninety percent of the reason. Um, the other ten percent of the reason is usually bad email address or for some reason the recipient firewall has blocked that. So um, that's something you need to be aware of right away. So um, with that being said, this is where the campaigns live. Um, the first thing that we need to do with a campaign, any campaign, whether it's a broadcast campaign or a touch campaign, is we need to create a marketing template. Okay. Now, this is how you would create a marketing template. Now, it's very important important to realize that the, of the categories right here. You can see all of them are checked. And as you can see, as I uncheck them, your choices go away. So for this exercise, we're going to choose newsletter. And these are currently all of the templates that you have available to you. We're constantly adding more. And um, for those action coaches, you, you probably are aware that you have over 100 templates specifically to action coaches. Um, but this webinar, um, I'm not going to touch on those templates. Um, if anyone needs to know, um, any action coaches on the webinar need to know where to find those templates, please send me an email and I'll respond right away on where to find them. So right here are our templates for um, newsletter. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pick one. And I'm going to pick this one, food event left sidebar. Okay. Now, this is what we have. We have this template. And now we are in create slash edit mode for this template. The first thing that we need to do is we need to give it a name. So I am going to give it a name. Now, we could subject this any way we want. I'm going to call it new webinar training. Now, as you see here on the side, you can personalize it. So you could add any of these fields to appear after this subject right here. So what a lot of people want to do is they want to put their first name. So when this appears, um, after you sent it, it will say new, new webinar training, Jim, Bill, Susie, whatever name that you choose um, as you personalize it. And also, it will draw that information from the contact record. So um, that's two things you got to make sure are in the contact portion of your record, are the email address and whatever it is that you choose here. Okay. So now we're in edit create mode. As you can see, these are divided up into blocks. Okay. And it's very important that you look at the title of the block and because, hold on please, I apologize for that. I'm always in demand. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. So you, you need to realize that this is in black. So header heading will correspond to header heading right here. Okay, so the reason I'm telling you that is you can see this is where you would format this block. Header heading, background, okay, you can see how it changed that color. Same thing with image, okay. Image background color, we could change that if we wanted to. And down the road. Now, every block has an edit mode. So you could see, once I put my cursor in the blocks, you could see these four choices. And the pencil is what you would use to edit the block. This is here as if you want to drag to move this block copy the block, or delete the block. So, normally where we live is we live in this edit mode right here. Now, there's a lot of things in this mode. Most of them you're familiar with. There's a, there's a few 
that I want to point out to you. There's basic formatting, bold, italic, underline, okay, things like that. There's also um, justify buttons here, bullets, numbers, basic stuff, okay. Now, as we did up here with the personalization, we can also personalize here too by using this this button here. So you have two choices, two chances to personalize. You can personalize here or you can personalize here. So getting back to the edit mode, there's some choices that I want to make you aware of. This one here is you could paste from Microsoft Word. If you had a Word document that you wanted to include here, this is how you would do it. More importantly, this is where you can insert an image. So I clicked on the image icon and I will browse the server. Now this will show me all of the choices that I have to include in that template. Now we also have available to you stock images. Stock images are, really, are um, divided up into different categories. to fit your needs and we're also adding more of these as well. Now, another thing that you could do is you could add something to this if you choose to. So this is what you would just go to your where your pictures are and if you wanted to upload one for future use, that's how you would do it. Now that you've uploaded it, we can insert it. Now, you could see that this is your preview and here is where you can make it a different width, height, to, to fit into the space you want it to fit into. So you can see that, obviously, this is very big. So that gave you the opportunity to fit it into whatever makes sense for your, for your marketing template. Okay. For, for, for this exercise, we're going to keep it the way it is, and, uh, and we'll work with this. So that's what this here is, is uh, for. Now, another thing that um, a lot of people are interested in is if you want to insert a link. Now, this link could be a document. So if I wanted to include this document right here, I would simply click the, the document and click the link button and then click OK. And then that would put the link in here um, for your customers to, to, to click on, um, whether it be a survey, whether it be whatever, whether it be a link back to your website or to a specific web page um, or to a, a form, whatever. Um, this is how you would do that as well. Now, um, the, one of the last things... Um, in here is if if you linked it and then all of a sudden well you know I don't want to I don't want to have that any longer you could just click the unlink button and that will go away okay now also when you're um, inserting something you could also the link you could link it to an image or a stock image just like we did before so I'm going to go ahead and close this okay so now we've created our our marketing template um, once again, the, this is the, the header background. This is how you can change it. So there's certain things, there's a lot of things you can do with formatting right here. So just wanted to make you aware of how to do those. So now we have our marketing template designed. As gorgeous as this is, we have it designed. Okay, I, I, I don't like this color. It's killing me. Okay, so now it's very important to save it. Okay, so remember before when I said about the categories, we had auto response, newsletter, et cetera, et cetera. This was created in a newsletter, so it's important for you to understand. Now, I've created my marketing template called Webinar 11.7. So now what we're going to do is... We've created the marketing template. Now we're going to create our broadcast campaign. 
For those of you who do not know, a broadcast campaign is a one-time blast to your, your leads and customers. And the difference between the broadcast campaign and a touch campaign is a touch campaign uses the same design concepts, uses the same editing concept, colors, fonts, links, etc. However, a touch campaign is a series of templates that you could send out in intervals that fit your business need. You could send them out in, in um, one day, three days after the next, the previous one, etc. And we'll go through that as well. So now we're going to use, we're going to create a broadcast campaign. Now, if you remembered why I said it, it was important to remember the category because this is where you're going to choose the template that you just created. So now the category is newsletter. And I'm going to, to pick the one we just created and I'm going to hit select. So this puts our template that we just created, uh, our marketing template, it just it just put it in our broadcast campaign. Now we could call we have to name our broadcast campaign. So we're going to name it. Okay, now here's an important part. You have to be able to have a group set up to send your your business your broadcast campaign out. A groups for those that don't know, our groups are just a logical selection of your leads in your customers. And the way you could do this is you can simply select as many as you want and we're going to make a group and we're going to call it Web Today. Okay, so we're going to save that. Now we're going to go back to our broadcast campaign. So now this is where I could choose the group I wanted to send it to. Now, your groups will be divided up into whatever makes sense for your business model. For example, if you had a workshop or if you just, um, uh, any function and you gathered those, those people's information and you added them into the CRM, then you could create a group called workshop and say the workshop was on October 31st. So you can create a group called workshop October 31st and then you could send this broadcast campaign to everyone that's in that group. Now, if you'd like to segment a little a little more, then what you could do is you could is you could use what we call a contact filter or a lead filter. Basically, this is a filter of your leads and this is a filter of your contacts. Let me show you how this works. If I wanted to, to use a lead filter, then I will click lead filter and then I will oops sorry. I'm gonna create a new one here. Now these are things that you could that you could filter on to allow you to further drill down into what you want as far as sending these to to different um, to different people. Now, it's important for you to understand that all these lists of fields that you see here come from your custom fields that you set up with one of the very first things you did. Let me show you where that is. So take a mental picture of these things right here. So you see salutations, sports, hobby, interests, um, things like that, division, plant. Now, where this is, is right here. Okay, right here. So why am I showing you this? Because if it's something that you'd want to filter on, you need to make sure that you have it here. And we've gone over how to add um, additional fields. Um, if you need to filter on it. Okay, so we just so we just added filter right there. So. We'll save that. Now when we go back to our, our broadcast campaign and we want it to, to do a, um, a filter, it 
this is how we would do it. Now you can see that we should have filter. There it is. So we could add this. We could do create it on. This is a popular one. This will give you the format on when is when did when did this person become um, a lead to you? And this is where you would be able to enter the date, or you can enter a range. That's pretty self-explanatory. Or you could do a tour from. Okay, so so we're going to use everyone that you added this fiscal year. As you see, it shows you January first to December. 31st and we're going to save. Now that puts this here. So that shows you how you could further drill down when you're sending your broadcast campaign. Um, so you could send it to, to, to um, a drill down lead filter or a contact filter. So we have that all set up. Now lastly, if you say, well, you know, I really want to edit this. There's one more thing I caught or, or you noticed. You can also edit here as well. Okay. It, however you'd like to do it. It's, it's better to edit them in your marketing template because you always have them for you. Um, and it's But you can do this here if you want. Now you notice the width of this. Is, you can change that by clicking on the width. Okay. Now we're going to save this. Now you notice after we click save, we have some selections up here, okay? We can schedule this to go out at a specific date, and we could also schedule it to go out at a specific time by clicking on the schedule. We can execute it right now. We can copy it in case we wanted to use it in, a future, in the future. We can test it. This is always a good thing to do to test it. Um, you could test it. You could send an email to yourself or send an email to a colleague. You know, hey, check this broadcast campaign out. Tell me what you think. Um, that would be the test feature here. Um, there's rules. Okay, this is kind of cool. Rules are things that you can that that happen as a result of of your 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 reader doing something. Okay, so if you have a link in your broadcast campaign and they click the link, then you could either notify the sender, the sales rep, the user, and you can select your users here. Or you could change a group. Now, follow me on this. Before we had our workshop on, on Halloween, October 31st, and we sent out a broadcast campaign to those to those people. So say 10 of them responded and they would like for you to have another workshop. You could actually create a group and move it to that group which you've already designed a marketing template and a broadcast campaign. So it's immediately going to go into that group. So next time you want to send um, a follow-up, you can send it to that group which you already created. Okay. Now, the, the rules will change as far as uh, touch campaigns going on. And, and I'll get to that when we get there. This is, a, this is a little different when it gets to touch campaigns. You can add a note or you can add tasks. Okay. You add a note, it's going to obviously give you the note types and the note text. Add tasks. You can add your tasks here of what you would like to happen if the link is clicked. Now, this is something that you'd be able to use if someone clicked on the link. Then you could then assign it to another person in your organization. You can assign it to a sales rep. Say, hey, this person clicked this link. They might be very interested. We need to contact them. Or whatever fits your business model. And here's a reminder, email pop-up. Okay. So that is um, campaign rules. They're kind of cool. I, I think they're more important, and I, I think the use for them is more prevalent in touch campaigns. That's why I'll talk about them when we get there. Okay. Okay. So we created this, this broadcast campaign. And um, now we were we were ready to send it. Let me get back. Let me get out of here. Okay. Now you see the campaign rules. Now, one of the most important features 
of the broadcast and touch campaign is the, is the ability to see its effectiveness. Now, that's where this result button comes in. So when you click on the results, this is going to show you some important things. Now, one of the things that, this is my test account, I apologize, I don't, we don't have any reports. Um, but what this will show you, it will show you how many people, you'll see blocks, you'll see six different, seven different squares here. And I'll show you what this is in a minute. I'll log out and log into another account. And this will show you things like sent, how many people it was sent to. It will show you how many people opened it, how many people clicked on it, how many people um, it unsubscribed, marked it as spam. There's also a way of telling, telling um, if it bounced or if it dropped. Bounced and dropped are usually um, indicative of a bad email address or the email address is no longer valid or there were some network issues that caused that to happen um, or um, some other anomaly. Um, so let me show you what this, what this looks like. I'll log in to um, one of our users who is an extensive um, advocate of the broadcast campaigns. She uses them um, all the time. Okay, now. This is a list of some of her campaigns, 1 through 10 of 20. So we're going to click on um, this one. So this is what she's designed. Very nice. And here is what I was talking about in the results. Okay. Now you can see it was sent to 832 people, 142 opened it. Um, two people clicked, three bounced, five, etc. spam, dropped. Okay, these two, uh, we're required by law to have those. Okay, so if someone unsubscribed, then it will change the email status to opt it out or unsubscribe. Therefore, even if you wanted to send it to a group that they're in, they will not get it because of their, um, their choice to opt out. What's also cool about this is that you can click on these and it will give you the list of all those people that opened it out of the 832, that's how many people opened it. Okay, so this is a very, very important tool for determining the effectiveness of your of your touch campaigns and your broadcast campaigns. So let me log back into here, and then we'll open up the broadcast campaigns. Now you could also look at all your broadcast campaigns by um, date. You can first, last, etc. One of the things I, I recommend to people is that when you're looking at your broadcast campaigns, it's very important to put this here. What this does, it will show you the group to where this was sent. And for those that don't know how to do that, it's as simple as going from here and then you can put your target in there. Okay, now, so that's that's the broadcast campaign piece of it. Now let me touch on, let, let me touch, let me touch on the touch campaigns, um, and then I'm going to unmute, and then we can start asking questions and go over a few other things. Touch campaigns, you design them exactly like you design a broadcast campaign, okay? Um, I, for the sake of time, I don't think we need to go through that again, but let me open one up and show you um, what this looks like. Okay, now you can see that a touch campaign, as I said before, you can have multiple messages. Multiple messages usually means multiple templates. For example, we have a customer that um, has a touch campaign, it's called Seven Days of Healthy Eating. So every seven day they get a new email with helpful uh, healthy recipes, um, cooking hints, et cetera, et cetera. Now, when you're creating your touch campaign, this here is the same as your broadcast. So you have your name, your group, your filters, 
this is important. What What is the starting date that you want this to begin on? Because it is, as you know, it's going to start, message one will start on whatever day you choose. So this is pretty similar, the from name, the from email, your categories, your templates. For example, we want to make this message one. Now, if we want to do another one, message two, and then message three, we could put um, this in there. Okay, and message four, we could put um, this one in there. So, however you want to say, you know, how you want to do it. Now, the cool thing about this is if you have your marketing template set up first, then your broadcast, I'm sorry, your touch campaign is much easier to set up because you will just go through and just pick from here your templates that you've already set up. So, you can literally set this up in, in however long it takes you to click from here to here to here to here. Okay, now, it's important to note that here's the interval. Now, there is some confusion. Well, does, does the interval, interval mean from uh, the start of the message? Is this going to go, is, is message six going to go from um, five days from the start of the message or five days? What, what, what's the interval mean? The interval is how many days from the previous message. So you don't have to calculate, well, you know, I sent this on Monday, and let's see, the weekend's coming up, so I have, you know, so, no, no, no. It goes from the previous message, so it's important to remember that. Once again, your formatting is, is the same, your edits, pencils, colors, everything. So then once we have that, um, then we could save it, and Now we'll be able to use this as a touch campaign. As you can see, I just put a a um, group that I had selected. And now, now you can see that I saved this once again as in the broadcast campaigns. Now we have more choices up here. Some of them look familiar. Save it. Copy it. Copy the message, test it, send it to yourself, send it to a colleague, your campaign rules, and lastly, the results. The results will show you those same boxes as when I logged into Carol's. It will show you sent, open, clicked, uh, bounced, unsubscribed, etc. So um, that's that's the effectiveness of your of your touch campaign. It's a really really good way of keeping yourself in front of your your um, potential customers' um, visibility. It's a very very good way to do that. Now, with that, I'm going to open it up and see what kind of questions we have. So, hang on a second. Let me get this here. I was afraid of that. Okay. Okay. What kind of questions do we have? Hey, Joe. This is Brendan. Hi. How you doing? I have a question. Very good. It's um, on the messages. What happens if you wanted the same message to repeat? You, you have message one you, occur every five days? Yeah. You would just copy the message and, and change the interval. That's all you would have to do. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That's a good question. What other questions do we have on broadcast and touch campaign? Questions. Come on, this is an important part, guys. Hey, Joe, John Waller, you got a, got a second? Yeah, how you doing? Good, how are you? Good, so thank here's you. a question for you. So um, so if I wanted to use this, let's say, for different prospects, and I'm going to send it out to, let's say, um, I've got a car dealer I've been, I want to do different marketing on. I'm going to only send it to this one guy. So let's say I want to hit him like every three days. I can just do it on one individual prospect, not like 45. 
Yes. You do that, and okay. the, what, the way you would have to do that is you would have to filter by email, as I showed you earlier. So imagine, could you imagine all the car dealers on Stevens Street? Okay, so some of them are clients, some of them are prospects, and some aren't. So you would pick and choose different ones. Okay. Okay. <laughs> hold, hold on, John. I'm having a hard time hearing you. Yeah, hold on, John. Excuse me. Excuse me. Hello. Hello, guys. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Folks, I really need you guys to, to quiet down. I can't hear the questions that are being asked. So please, 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 background noise needs to stop. Um, all right, John, let's try this again. You have, you have to send it to some prospects. So let's say if you get, there's 25 car dealers on TV. Hold on, John. This is John Waller, right? You got it. Okay, let's try it now, John. Okay, so let's say you've got 25 different car dealers on the TV. Five of them are already customers. Okay. You don't want to send it out to them. You want to send it to the ones that don't return your phone calls, and you want to do drip marketing on them, like every three or four days. Okay. Yeah. You would filter by email, like you said. Right. Okay. This is like the magic bullet. I, didn't know, I just had no idea SoftFront did this, Joe. This is awesome. Yeah, that's good. Another thing that you could use that you is is able is um, helpful for you is um, you can make use of of groups in that kind of way. So if you have someone that um, is is not whatever fits that parameter, they're not responding, or or you'd like you know whatever, you could create a group for those people and then send those uh, drip campaigns to those people in the groups. However, you'd want to do it. That's that's one, one at a time, that's, not, yeah. because everybody's going to be in a, in a different. In a different mode because you, know, you talk to somebody on Tuesday, you talk to them on Thursday, so you don't want to send, you don't want to keep pounding everybody with the same message because it's going to right. be a different message. Right. Okay. Right. Now that's another that's another thing where these rules could come into play. So you could see if um, on my screen okay. now, you could see there you could have different rules for every message. So like say they message one and then message two and then message three. So message three they did something. They clicked on a link, or or they did something. Then you okay. then you could add different. However, you you could change it to a group. Now, um, John, thanks for reminding me. Now, if you have two, if you have your groups, say you have a group called um, today and a group called tomorrow. Okay, so you right. send your drip campaign out to the people um, in the group called today. Now, if someone clicks on a link, then you could change their group to a group called. Um, whatever fits right here. You can choose in a group called right, tomorrow. Right. Now, what the cool thing about this, John, is if you have your drip campaign and you change them to a group tomorrow, and there's a drip campaign running for a group called tomorrow, they will start getting message number one of the new touch campaign called tomorrow. They so what? They'll get the. They'll start they, getting message one from the drip campaign called tomorrow. Okay, they're in a group today, okay. and they clicked on right. a link. Then you then they, because of your rule. You told them, okay, well, I'm going to change groups now, so I'm going to put them into a group called Tomorrow. Well, you already have a, a drip a touch campaign running for the group called Tomorrow. So then they'll automatically start getting message one from that um, touch campaign called Tomorrow. So that's another way you okay. can segment it and, and, and do different things. Because when you're prospecting, you get people, they get thrown into the, into the, uh, the funnel, the top of the funnel at different times, you know, throughout your campaign. And, Right. So you don't have to manage. You don't have to manage your brains out. It makes life a lot easier. Totally, totally. I, I understand. Like, like, like all the people you met last night at the mixer. Okay, okay. Those are going to be people that you met on eleven six fourteen, and then you do another mixer with Caesar Plot the next Wednesday. Those are people that you meet on, uh, you know, eleven thirteen fourteen. So they're all different people getting thrown into the funnel right. at different times. Right. Right. So you have to have a rule based on dates and mixers and, and different events that are happening. Right. Yeah. Now that's a, that's another. Yeah. That's that's very good. And we do that. So um, you know you could use with your rules. You could add a note or add a task um, or immediately put them into a group that a touch is running. So yeah, that's a good point. Okay. This this rocks. This is this is like the secret bullet. This is just 
Yeah, this is like having a bunch of a bunch of virtual admins on on steroids working for you. This is great. <laughs> now, that's awesome. I'm glad to hear that, John. Right on. Uh, okay. Let me let me open this back up to see if there's any other questions. Okay. Okay. Joe? Yes. Okay, I got another question. Okay. The, um, what about numbers of uh, recipients? Okay. You can, yourself, like how many of these uh, drip campaigns can you have going, and then how big can your broadcast distribution be? It's, it depends on how many um, email credits you have left in your account. They could be as big as you want them to be. Okay. Because every drip, every uh, every rely on credits. I'm sorry. Does the drip campaigns rely on email credits? Uh, each email, for example, if you have a group with ten people in it, that's ten emails. So, and they're getting a sequence of seven drips. Is that seventy email requests? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Okay, what else do we have for questions? Joe, Daryl Hable, can you hear me? Hey, Daryl, how you doing, buddy? Great. Hey, hang on, Daryl. Um, okay. Who's, who's having the party? We want to go. I know. There's, a, there's, there's a one user who's having a party. I don't know. They, You know what they did? They imported Portillo's beef sandwiches. That's what they did. There, there you go. Um, on the... Um, broadcast campaign. Yeah. Using using a um, the click. We're we're having some problems just understanding. You know, what a click in the email actually accomplishes for us. Okay, when you're when you're talking about designing um, designing a, bro a broadcast campaign, are you talking about the link uh, feature? Yes. <laughs> Excuse me. Okay, so let me go here and, and open one up though, that we just designed. Okay, so are you talking about if you right here if you were going to insert a um, a link right you, right here Is that what you're talking about? Uh, for some reason, I lost. I'm not seeing your screen change. I lost it at okay. So now I got I got the list of broadcasts that I can see. Okay. Yes. Okay. All right. So now are you talking about this right here? Hey. Yes, that's green. Okay. Okay. What that'll do for you is, for example, say say you want to. Um, hang on a second. Okay, what, for example, Daryl, is if you have, um, you, you, so you've done your, your thing with the Rushmore, your, your Rushmore group, and um, say within your announcement you have a, a link that you want them to go to, so you, you make your template, and in that template, it says we're, we're glad to announce this new bond measure that we have. We're glad to announce this bond measure that we have, and we think you'd be real interested in it. And so ex instead of having to explain the whole bond measure, you, can, if you, you would already have that on a, on a place within your server or your website that you can include a link to straight there. So if they're interested... Then they can just click on that link, and it'll take them right right to that where that information is on that on on, on whatever it is you want them to know about. Does that make sense, Daryl? Okay. Daryl, are you still with me? Okay, I guess we lost Daryl. Okay, do we have any other questions from anyone in the group? Are you, Joe, I'm sorry, I think I have myself muted. Okay, that's okay. Um, I'll go through that one more one more time, Daryl. And um, here, here's, if we're still here's having my question, Joe, I heard all of your stuff. So all we really want is to be able to have a thank you to that person to let them know that we will contact them. That's that's what we want in our click in our link in the in the broadcast. 
but we're not being able to figure out how to bring just that kind of a message up. So what you're saying is that if they, if, so you, you, you've designed your broadcast campaign, and, and w w at what point do you want them, is there going to, there's going to be something in there, there's going to be something in there that, that you want them to click, right? Yes. Okay, and then when they click that, you want them to be able to get a thank you or or something I like think, that? Yep, just, just a thank you note that says that we will call them to schedule you know to to schedule a time to go in more detail with them okay i apologize whoever that is in the background I, i'm pleading with you to mute yourself that, that noise is, is you know what joe they I, I was getting feedback i hung the phone up before and i'm listening to you off my computer speaker so maybe it's feedback because they've got sh the webcast open and the phone line. Okay. All right. Okay. Daryl, if it, if this gets too cumbersome for us, then I'm, then I'll call you as soon as this is over, uh, and then we can talk about this. Okay. Um, if you want to do that, that's fine too. I yeah, we can address it yeah, separately. Yeah. Yeah. Why don't we do that, Daryl? Um, okay. I'll, yeah. And okay. I have all your information. I'll just call you afterwards. Uh, so. Okay, other than Daryl's question, um, anything else that we have? Any other questions on broadcast and touches? I just have two quick questions. Yeah, who's this? Um, so, oh, this is Emma. Hi, Emma. Hey. Um, I'm just wondering, so first question is, um, is are these emails going to be, when we send them out, are they going to be mobile friendly? Yes. Perfect. Okay, and my next question, um, is it possible to send out a test email just to see what it looks like? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, let, me, let, me show you, let me show you where you do that um, under broadcast campaigns. The one that we've, um, that we've created today is webinar 1117. So you can see right here um, it says test. You can click on test and you can put your email address right there and it will send you a test before you send it out to everybody else. Oh, okay, perfect. Yeah. Okay, that sounds great. Thank you so much. You're welcome, Emma. Anytime. I'm glad you were able to join. Thank you. Any other questions? Marketing and touch campaigns. Okay. Okay, we see we got another 10 minutes left. Let me, let me go through something else I wanted to tell you about. Um, is right here, um, every time we have a new release, we just had one yesterday, um, is it, you, you should have gotten an email explaining these. Um, but basically, we had a new release yesterday. And so this is, the, uh, this is what we've introduced um, in the latest release yesterday. We've introduced now that you can add relationships, so you'll be able to specify um, how your customers and your leads uh, mix in with one another. Um, so if someone referred someone to you, then you'll be able to check everything. Who was the referrer and, and et cetera. So that's, that's kind of cool, and that was something that um, one of our customers asked for. We thought it was important, and so we added it. And, and once again, every webinar I encourage people, and if you have a suggestion or you have something that you really would like to see, please, please let us know about it because we can take those seriously. Okay? Now we also integrate, we now offer integration with LinkedIn. Um, that was a big, big request, so now we offer that. And um, multiple Facebook pages. A lot of people were saying that they couldn't link their business Facebook page only their personal one. Now you can you can do your business one as well as your personal one. And um, there's some other other things here as well. So I encourage you to go in there occasionally and and look at these and see um, all the things that we have that are new. So. Um, and once again, the help button, if you click on the help button and you want to contact support, I encourage you, put, put your information here and put your issue, your suggestion here, and, and then we treat those very seriously. 
So that's one thing you want to do. Uh, once again, uh, that's that's all I have for for the new stuff and the broadcast and touch campaigns. Um, I'm going to go last call for questions. If anyone has any questions, now's the time. Uh, please ask them. Uh, we will have a copy of this webinar on our uh, on our website um, by the end of the day, so you'll be able to review it if you need to. Um, also, we are going to be creating about another 15 to 20 videos, which will help you um, understand things and uh, do different things as our system grows and becomes even better than it was. So. With that, I don't I don't detect any questions. Welcome um, to Verizon I'm, Wireless. The wireless customer you called is not available at this time. Please try your call again later. Announcement one. Switch four zero dash six. Okay. All right. So let's end this webinar. Um, Welcome to Verizon Wireless. The wireless customer you called is not available at this time. Please try your call again later. Announcement one. Switch four zero okay, dash guys. six. Okay. That's it for the webinar. Um, I'm going to hang up. I'm sorry for all the background noise. Um, I'll, I'll see what I could do to to to, um, to to get rid of that, and um, um, and we'll go from there next time. Um, Daryl, I'll call you in a couple minutes. Okay.